I can look at a tree. The tree is the word by which I recognise that which is standing in the field. But I also know that the word is not the tree. Right? The word is not the tree. My wife is not the word. Right? But I have made the word my wife. I don't know if you see all the subtleties of all this. So I must very clearly understand from the beginning the word is not the thing. The word desire is not the feeling of it, right? The extraordinary energy that has behind that reaction. So I must be very watchful that I am not caught in the word. And also the mind must be, the brain must be active enough to see that the object may create desire, right? But there is a desire which is separate from the object. You are following all this? Are we together in this? Are we so aware that the word is not the thing? That desire is not separate from the observer who is watching desire. That the object may create desire, but there is there is desire independent of the object. Right? And each one has a separate desire. The religion wants God, the mundane, and so on, so on, so on. So, one must be aware of all this. So, we are going to find out what is desire. Not the object in the window or on the road or the person I see, but what is the, how does desire arise? Right? How does a desire flower? Why does this have such extraordinary energy behind? Please, we are together in this, not I explain and you follow, but together we are moving. Because this has a great importance in relationship. If we don't understand deeply the nature of desire, we will always be in conflict with each other. I may desire one thing and my wife may desire another. My children may desire something totally different. So we are always at log ahead with each other. And this battle, this struggle is called love relationship. We are say, asking, what is the source of desire? How does desire begin? Uh, 
Anas. Please, there will be question and answers after next Sunday. So please be good enough, if you don't mind, to, then we can write down the question and I'll respond, but not now, if you don't mind. We are asking what is the source of desire. And we must be very truthful in this, very honest, because it's very, very deceptive, very subtle unless we understand the root of it. For most of us, all of us, sensations are important, sensory responses, right? The touch, the taste, the smell, the hearing. And for most of us, a particular sensory response is more important than the other responses. If we are artistic, we see something special. If we are uh, trained as an engineer or this or that, that's something. Sensory responses are different, and so on. So, we never observe with all the re- sensory respons- responses totally. You know? We respond or observe in our responses about something special, divided. Now, let's find out if it is possible to respond totally with all your senses. See the importance of that. That is, if, I, if one responds totally with all your senses, there is the elimination of a centralized observer. Wonderful, all this, right? But when we respond to a particular thing separated, then in that separation begins the division, right? I wonder. Find out when you go out of the cabin, out of this tent, when you look at that river, the flowing waters, the light on the waters, the swiftness of the waters. Find out if you can look at it with all your senses. Don't ask me how. Then the job becomes mechanical. You understand? But if you say, let me try, look at it, find out. That is, to educate ourselves in the understanding of the sensory responses which will be total. I must come back to something else. Sorry, there's only part of it. We're asking what is the source of the desire, of desire. As we said, sensory responses. We begin with sensory responses. Right? You see something. The seeing brings about the response, right? You see a green shirt or a green dress, 
The seeing awakens the response. Then the contact takes place. Right? Then from that contact Thought creates the image of you in that dress, or you in that car, or you in that house. Right? So, watch, slow, go slowly into this. Sensory responses, the seeing, the hearing, the tasting, sensory responses. Then the contact, not only with the eye, but touching it, then thought creating the image, you in that shirt or in that dress or in that car, and then the desire arises. Follow this? I see the seeing of a car in the road, nice lines, highly polished, etc., the power behind it. Then I touch it, feel it out, go round it, examine the engine. Then Thought says, me getting, the creating the image, me getting into the car, and starting the ignition, putting the pedal again, drive. <laughs> no, just see, this is actually what goes on, right? So desire begins. The source of desire is when thought creates the image, up to then there is no desire. There is sensory responses, contact, which is normal, all right, healthy. But then thought creates the image, and that begins from that second begins desire. You follow? I see a beautiful vase, see the shape of it, the beauty of it, the Grecian and all the rest of how we went it. And touching it, looking at it the beauty of it, gradually, if I create the image, wanting it, begins. Mm. 